these remain remembered only as long as they are told, and stories about science generally come second to fables and history. One such a story, that of Pretoria, South Africa's administrative capital, is also neglected despite its wonderful history. With a population around two and a half million, the city of Tswane requires almost 800 million litres of fresh water per day. With increasing population since its founding in 1855, pristine spring water from the Fountain Valley met all the water requirements until the mid-1930s, after which subvention became necessary. Everyone uses water every day, whether to drink, wash or for recreational purposes. Where this water comes from is often of little concern to the water users. However, few people understand the issues pertaining to urban water supply, especially in an arid country such as South Africa. A general perception exists that surface water is more sustainable and more trustworthy than groundwater. High dam construction costs coupled with increasing risk of pollution, high evaporation and high susceptibility to droughts, however, make this statement debatable. It's for this reason that the Hydrogeological Heritage Overview series was initiated, to increase understanding and appreciation for the hidden treasure that is groundwater, and which has faithfully supplied Pretoria with drinking water for almost 160 years. As you enter Pretoria, you pass the Fountains Interchange. This beautiful city, the capital of South Africa, was founded due to its vast freshwater resources in the form of two natural springs in the Groenkloof region. The Bronkhorst brothers established the farms of Elandsboort and Groenkloof around 1839, mainly due to the presence of these springs. These springs were purchased by the Zuid-Afrikaans Republic in 1863 for water supply to Pretoria and Groenkloof was declared a conservation area in 1895 by President Kruger to protect the wildlife in this area. This nature reserve also serves as protection to the Dolomite Aquifer supplying these two natural springs. Called Upper Fountain and Lower Fountain respectively, these springs additionally contribute to the upper reaches of the Arpis River. Upper and lower fountains supply 46 million litres of water combined to Pretoria every day, yet still allowing sufficient water to discharge into the Arpis River. This water is supplied to the CBD until this day. The water is of excellent quality and is continuously being monitored to ensure drinking water quality is maintained. The springs are separated by a dike and occur in a dolomite aquifer in the fountain's west and fountain's east compartments. Due to the low permeability of the shale to the north of the Tunispoort group dolomite, groundwater is forced out on the surface in the form of springs. A collection chamber, combining the water from upper and lower fountains, was constructed in 1889 and the pump house was commissioned during the British occupation in 1902 to supply fresh water to the forts around Pretoria. A monument erected during Pretoria's centenary in 1955 reads, This monument is situated between the two fountains which yield 5 billion gallons per day. This water was the sole supply of Pretoria for its first 75 years. In 1860, following Pretoria's selection as the seat of government, furrows were constructed to divert the fountain water to Pretoria by means of gravity. The inscription at one of these exposed furrows reads, one of the oldest relics of Pretoria's pioneering years. From 1860 to 1920, water from the fountains was supplied to the central part of Pretoria by means of a network of furrows. 
The furrows were covered by slate by approximately 1885, later with earth and finally with paving. They were used as stormwater channels until the 1940s. Remnants of these furrows can still be seen between Sammy Mark Square and the State Theatre. The Sammy Marks Fountain was placed in Church Square during the early 1900s, diverting the fountain water. The statue of President Kruger replaced the fountain in the 1900s and the fountain has since been moved to the Pretoria Zoo. Pretoria's population growth may be a function of its vast water resources, the proximity of the Witwatersrand gold fields or its status as capital city. The population showed a gradual increase from around 35,000 people around 1900 in the municipality the size of 2,040 hectares. In the early 1980s, the population had increased to 700,000 over an area of 57,000 hectares. Since then, the population has grown rapidly together with the land area of the municipality due to incorporation of adjacent municipalities. The latest figures for 2012 report the population of the city of Tswane as being in the order of 2.4 million within a 640,000 hectare municipality. Water demand has followed the same trend from 700 million litres per year in the 1930s to 88,000 in the 1980s and 270,000 million litres per year at present. Grootfontein, translating to Great Fountain from Afrikaans, is by far the most impressive architecturally. As water demands increased, Grootfontein was added to supply an additional 8 million litres of water per day to the Rietvlei water treatment works. The fourth spring is found en route to Bobsfontein. Translating to strong fountain from Afrikaans, Sterkfontein supplies in the order of 9 million litres per day to the residents of Centurion. Rietvlei was purchased in 1929, initially to tap six more springs. The dam was added and completed in the 1930s to subvent water supply by 15 million litres per day. With yet further growing demands, the volume was increased in 1988 to supply 40 million litres per day. Boreholes and the same cast aquifer system situated in the Rietvlei Nature Reserve are added to the water mix. Water from Grootfontein is eventually mixed with treated water from the Rietvlei Water Treatment Works. The Swartzbrot, also known as the Rietvlei Sprout, confluences with the Henops River downstream of the dam and becomes the Sesmail Sprout. The Rietvlei Nature Reserve, although a haven for nature lovers, primarily serves to protect the water resources supplied to the residents of Pretoria. Pretoria is a city with an interesting history. What started off as two strong natural springs supplying pristine quality water without interruption or concern now houses the administrative capital of South Africa and almost 2.5 million people in the greater city of Chwane municipality. Yet the springs remain the one consistent source, consistent in both its faithful supply and its outstanding water quality. Protected from evaporation and pollution and significantly more affordable to use as no excessive construction costs are required, Groundwater is the reason for Pretoria's founding and its rise to the leading world city it is today. However, in order for the success story to continue, it should be shared. The occurrence of groundwater, the formation of springs, the intricate geological history and the important hydrological heritage shaping the history of the city and the nation should not be overlooked. 
because it is considered irrelevant or technical. It should be appreciated as the most fundamental human need governing our existence, our development and the status of Pretoria in South Africa and the world. It is only with interest and knowledge that we can manage this precious hidden resource and it's only with management that we can sustainably use this resource for the foreseeable future.